I want you to turn in your Bibles this morning. I have a few words I want to give to you. I cannot wait until this evening when Pastor Don Allen is going to be here uh, and this remarkable North Georgia revival continues. I want to I want to get your attention and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. That's where I want us to land this morning. And I want to read verse 2 and following. The title of my message today is called Flip the Switch. Flip the Switch. Flip the Switch. Touch somebody and say, it's time to flip the switch. Say it again. It's time to flip the switch. As you're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I want to read a scripture to you out of 1 Peter, which says this, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and sober mm -hmm, in your prayers. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and sober or watchful in your prayers. I love the New Living Translation that says it this way. The end of the world is coming soon. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined in your prayers. How many in this room could agree with me that things are traveling at warp speed toward the end of all things? It is at this moment and at this time that the church must be serious about prayer. It must become watchful, sober, and disciplined. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Your Bible says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. I want to speak to you about the subject of speaking in tongues. I feel that it is a mandate from the Lord to me to keep pushing this button until everyone at Christ Fellowship understands it utilizes it, and walks in the full dimension of the power of the Holy Ghost as a result of it. I want to talk to you today about speaking in tongues. Now, some of you think, well, I've already speak in tongues. That's great. We're going to go to the next realm of that. There is nothing I believe that the devil fears more than a church that not only prays, but also speaks mysteries to God as a result of the supernatural ability of speaking in tongues. Now, I want to say that again. I want to make sure you get it. I do not believe that the devil fears anything more than this right here. That the church that speaks mysteries to God by praying and utilizing the supernatural ability of speaking in tongues to the Father you have to understand, like many of you, I did not believe in this. I thought it was of the devil. I didn't practice it. I did not believe that it was viable. I thought it went out at the death of the last apostle. I mocked it. I scorned it. I made fun of it. I ridiculed it. But we're going to take our denominational glasses off if you have them as you came into this room. And we're going to look at this very briefly today about the value and the power of flipping the switch. The Bible says that he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Oftentimes when people are in a service quite like this and you hear someone speaking in a tongue or you, you hear someone praying in a tongue and you go, well, I don't understand that. That's confusing. Well, I just want to say, according to the word, well, we're not speaking for your edification. Mm -hmm. Now, there are plenty of times that the Bible tells us that we need to speak in languages that people understand, but there are some times that we speak in tongues, and you and I are not the audience. Look at the text again. I just want to hang out here for just a moment. He who speaks in a tongue 
does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, this word right here, mysteries, confounds people within the church. Because in the church, we want everything clear. Come on. We want everything to be able to be processed. But your Bible says there comes a time in your relationship with God that sometimes when you communicate to him, it's mysterious. So it leaves the door open for some things to not be understood in the church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Verse 3, but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation. Do you hear it? And comfort to men. So when I speak to you words that you understand, and I speak by revelation, I am bringing you what? I'm edifying you, I'm encouraging you, and I'm comforting you. But he who speaks in a tongue, now watch this. It's not one or the other. It's both and. It's not one pitted against the other that you need to do one and not do the other. The Bible is teaching us that both of these have place in the church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Verse 5. Look at your neighbor and say, don't miss this. I wish you all spoke in tongues. I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesy, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with a tongue, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. The very beginning of verse 5, I wish you all spoke with tongues, is very telling for us. Now, I want to talk to you about this for just a few minutes. Who in this room, when you pray, you run out of words to say, and you also run out of energy to pray? Can I see an uplifted hand? Let's just be honest. I mean, come on, every, everybody in this room, your hand ought to be going up. You run out of words, and then you run out of energy. Mm-hmm. The reason we run out of words is because your brain can only process and know certain things and know and have knowledge about certain things that you're concerned about. You don't know everything about your sons. You don't know everything about your daughter. You don't know everything that's going on in the office pool. You don't know everything that's going on in your neighborhood. You don't know what's coming down the pike tomorrow. And so when you pray, you have limited knowledge on the subject of which you are praying. So once you go through all of that word bank in your head, all that you know, then you are at the end of it and you can't pray anymore. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The Lord has given us a supernatural ability to tap into the spirit of God that knows all things and has infinite knowledge and knows the beginning and the end, and knows the ins and the outs from top to bottom of every subject, of every individual, of every circumstance in your life. And the devil wants to fight tooth and nail to keep you locked into one-dimensional praying, and that is praying in your native language. Because when you pray in tongues, which is for everyone in this room, you literally tap into the unending. The alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, if you will. I'm talking about who, who, who is all-knowing, omniscient, who knows everything. You are tapping into the spirit of God where there is no exhaustion of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. So the devil will work overtime to keep us limited to try to make this subject only for the super elite, those that are super spiritual, and not for the common man. We cannot get away from the fact that, the Paul, that Paul said, I wish you all spoke in tongues. Talk to me. 
Now, I want to hit the subject right here, right now. Your Bible teaches us that there needs to come a sort and type of prayer that is serious and watchful. James chapter 5 verse 16 says it this way. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. Now watch this. The heartfelt, persistent prayer of a righteous man is able to accomplish much. And made effective by God, it is dynamic and can release tremendous power. That is important for us to understand. Persistent prayer is vital. If we're going to see a move of God in our homes, in our churches, in our nation, it's not going to come as a result of us playing praying. Come on now. It's not going to come just simply us coming and praying maybe a few minutes a week. It's going to come when God's people become persistent and serious and watchful in praying. I love Romans chapter 15. I'm going to pull it up on the screen and listen how the, the writer of the, of the book of Romans puts it in Romans chapter 15, verse 30. Now I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Now watch this. For the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of, of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Now I want you to hear this. Praying is laborious, it's hard, it's labor intensive. In fact, Colossians chapter 4 verse 12 puts it this way, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, salutes you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all of the will of God. Prayer is not easy. Praying is difficult. That word strive in Romans 15 literally means to struggle with me, to come alongside of me and to fight vigorously with me. I believe that what has happened over the last couple of decades that we have taught so much about rest in the Lord. And that the Lord has accomplished everything for us. And all we need to do is to sit back and to receive it. That teaching is true. However, there's another element. When you get born again and the power of God and the Spirit of God comes inside of you, it is not a sele. It is not a place where I come and simply now let God continue to do what he does. I now become a son of his. I am what the Bible calls a joint heir. I am also a co-laborer with the Lord. In fact, Jesus taught us to pray this way, that the Lord would send forth what? Laborers in into the harvest. I'm afraid, though, that many of us have heard the word rest so often in our churches and coming from our pulpits that we have literally taken our ease in Zion and sat back and literally rested in the, quote, sovereignty, unquote, of God. That whatever's going to happen is going to happen and there's nothing that I can do to change it. I dare to differ. I would hope that others would read the entirety of the New Testament. That when you get born again, yes, you rest in him. There's no way to get to heaven by your works. But because you are saved, now you are a co-laborer with him, a partner with God, and you work in conjunction with him to release the kingdom of God on the earth. Mm -hmm. These words mean something, to struggle and to fight. I love this quote, and you can write it down. Prayer involves some form of spiritual striving, and without this striving, winning is not guaranteed. I feel that many times we're losing our battles because we are not striving in prayer. We say a few words and then we just leave it with God and then we just kind of sit back and hope that the lottery comes through for us. The magic balls, the numbers pop up and all of a sudden, God, you came through for me. We win today. 
But there are certain things in our lives that the devil is aware of that he doesn't want to let go of. He doesn't want to unlock that door. That's why the Bible teaches us about being persistent in prayer. Come on now, talk to me. That's why the Bible talks about laboring in prayer because there are certain things that the devil has his hands on. There are principalities and powers and rulers of, wickedness, uh, 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 rulers of wickedness and strongholds over people's lives that have to be unlocked and untangled and the only way is through prayer. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How many of us in this room, we can pray for like 20 or 30 seconds and then we're exhausted? There has to come a commitment as just as we have with our physical body to allow it to run long distances and just as our physical body is trained to endure working out and not getting tired after walking up a flight of steps, and you beat and train your body to get it into what? Everybody say shape. So you're not winded when you exercise. Our spirit man needs to be developed. Our spirit man must come into a place of being able to persevere during times of great resistance. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. I, I, I feel this by the Spirit. Oftentimes, we will pray, and after 30 seconds to a minute, we're physically and spiritually worn out. Your spirit man has to be exercised. Your spirit man has to grow in understanding and in knowledge. Your spirit man muscles have to be developed so that when you get in a spiritual wrestling match with the enemy, you can go toe to toe, not just one round, not two rounds, not three rounds, but you can go all 15, come on now, all 15 rounds and win a technical knockout if need be. Yeah. Thank you, Holy. I, I feel the presence of the Lord. This is what your Bible talks about called endurance. Mm -hmm. Too often, we give out in short order when we're battling because of a lack of endurance. We get exhausted. We run out of energy. I'm here to tell you today that we need to learn how to discipline our spirit man and to get our spirit man in a realm of being able to go to a 15 round. Listen, I'm talking about all. I'm, I'm talking about a battle royal with the enemy and not give up. So this is where I'm going with this before I transition again to tongues. Now listen to me. I feel by the Spirit that there are going to be times when our church comes together to pray that we're going to say, let's raise the volume of our prayer effort. Let's battle and war over an issue. It may be somebody's sickness. It may be somebody's uh, demonic oppression. It may be somebody going through a difficult time. But the Spirit of God says, I need you to war over that. I need you to battle over that. And so what we do often, not so much in this church, but what we do often is that we give all that we can for 20 to 30 to 45 seconds. And then we go, what's next? Then we take a breather. But how many of you know that the enemy can withstand a few punches. But when you and I war and labor and are spiritually disciplined and your spirit man has endurance, you're not going to give up. He's going to give up. And you can punch and counterpunch and punch and counterpunch and jab and then land the right hook at the right, at the right time. So there has to come some times that when we pray, and I've watched this in some times of, of, of our meetings, we'll pray feverishly for just a few, few seconds and sometimes a minute, then all of a sudden, without instruction, the noise goes down. 
Not that we were on a time limit. The noise just goes down. And yet we had not yet won the victory because we were all used to running maybe a, a block in the spirit. And we feel good about the block that we just ran, but it was a mile race. And so we gave up a tenth of the mile, a tenth of the mile right here, and we feel pretty good because we did something good and valuable, but yet there were nine-tenths of this mile that needed to be conquered, but because we had not spiritual endurance, our spirit man was not developed, our mind was not developed to be able to persevere and to push through the fatigue, that we quit right here, and we only gain one-tenth of the victory. Can you, can you think with me? Can you ponder and imagine with me? If we have a thousand of our people praying, I'm talking about a thousand of our people praying, seeking God, going after God with everything within us, everything within our spirit that's spiritually disciplined. I mean, you look sharp in the spirit. I'm talking about your spiritual abs are ripped. Come on now, somebody. I mean, you got muscles upon muscles. Now, you may be a little, a little out of shape physically, a little flabby in certain places, but your spirit, man, I mean, looks... Can you imagine a thousand of us walking into this yeah. room and, and, and the pastor stands up and says, listen, so-and-so sit. They're not giving him about 12 hours to live. We've got to battle until we get the victory. we got to stay in a place of vigorous warfare until we win this war. Can you imagine what's going to happen when a thousand people come on a Monday night to pray and a thousand come on a Wednesday night at six o'clock to pray? Can you imagine next Saturday a thousand people gathering in this room? Oh my goodness, I feel the presence of God coming into this room, spiritually fit, ready to do war. I'm talking about the sword and your saber sharpened. I'm telling you, your hands have been prepared for war. We're going to have to learn this. So how do you develop muscles physically? Consistency. You work them. You push through. You go to the gym when you don't want to. You go to the gym when someone calls you and says, hey, let's go somewhere. Let's join me for coffee this morning. And you go, no, every morning at six o'clock, I'm in the gym. I can't join. I can join you at 715, but I can't join you at six because there's always good reasons not to go to the gym. And so what do you do? You keep, you stay disciplined. You keep building. You keep constructing. You keep at it until you're able to push through the half mile. Then you run a whole mile. Then you're going to think, I'm going to go until I can run two miles. Then I can run three miles. It doesn't happen overnight. Then I'm going to run a 5K. Then I'm going to get a 10K. And then you just keep developing your physical body. You know how this works. It's the same thing in the spirit realm as well. Yes, Lord. So I'm not going to relent on this. I'm not, I'm not going to back off of helping you learn how to pray in the Holy Ghost and pushing you to pray long periods of time. Not a five minute here and a two minute there, but I'm talking about laboring vigorously with intensity before the Lord. When your phone is chiming and emails to answer and Facebook to cruise through, that's all calling your name and you're thinking, I got things to do. I got kids I got to check on. I've got, I, I've got deadlines to meet. And, 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 and so the first thing that we do, we, we, we acquiesce and we literally accommodate the whims of the things outside of the battle arena because the devil will make sure that there are things and distractions that will pull you out of the place of training. My Lord, I feel the presence of the Lord on that. The hardest job I have as a pastor is to get people to pray in this level, in this dimension. Yeah. So this is why Paul understood this. He says, now listen, I wish you all spoke in tongues because your understanding is so limited. See, 
Matthew, I have no idea what you're going to face tomorrow. I have no idea what's going to go on in your world tomorrow. You don't even know. But the Spirit of God knows. And far too often, we pray reactively. Austin has a car wreck. Or Lord, save him. Well, what about the prayer before? Maybe it could have been prevented. But because nobody prayed. See, I'm going to teach you something here. You may disagree, and that's okay. Not everybody has a death date that's predetermined when you're going to die. People believe that. Well, it was just his time. You mean... The 11 year old, it was just his time? After he had gone through a prayer line and somebody prophesied over him, he was going to be a missionary to the world. But it's just his time. You hear what I'm saying? I, I don't believe that there is a predetermined death date for us. The Bible, because, and the reason I do that because I got a great Bible to back it up. The Bible says if I'll honor my mother and daddy, I will lengthen my days. If I take heroin, drugs, crack, I will shorten my days. Yeah. Yeah. So there are people that die prematurely. That wasn't the will of God. Well, I thought everybody that died, it was the will of God. No, no, no. Read your Bible. There are a lot of people that died and it wasn't the will of God. There are a lot of people that you know and I know that's not the will of God when they die. Someone takes their own life. An abortion in the womb. I can take your life. Well, not if God doesn't want it. You want to make? You want to make? You, 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 want, you really want to have that argument? Wasn't God's will for Uriah to die? With Bathsheba? But David sent him to the front lines, and when you go to the front lines, certain things can happen, and it happened. If it was God's will for Uriah to die on the front lines and somebody had to get him to the front lines, then why did God hold David accountable? That's good. That's good. Yes. Then why is murder punishable? Yeah. Yeah. If you believe that every person has a death date and every person that's been murdered is the time of the Lord, then they're just instruments in the hands of God. Oh. So we've got to think inside the church. You have to be rational and, and logical and think from a holistic biblical perspective. So I don't know what Matthew's going to go through tomorrow, but the Spirit of God knows. So how do I pray? I say, Lord, I love Matthew. You've laid him on my heart. I'm going to pray all I know about Matthew. Lord, protect him. Lord, guard him. Let him have a great day tomorrow. Let Athena be really nice to him. Get him a gift or something. I don't know. And just, just pray for his little children. Blessed. But you know, I don't know what's going on in their life, but the Spirit of God laid him on my heart for a particular reason. And he said, I need you to pray because I have detected, watch this, I know that there's an assignment upon his life and I need you to pray. Oh, Lord. That's thick. That's thick. That's deep. My prayers can avert the enemy's assignment. Why did Paul say Epaphras was laboring intensively, praying for you? My Lord. Does this make sense? Okay, so then look at verse 14 of 1 Corinthians 14. I, I want to give you just a few nuggets here. Everybody good? 1 Corinthians 14. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. I'm going to be honest with you. I never knew this verse existed until I came out of the Pentecostal prayer meeting that this Southern Baptist pastor 
should not have been in that day that I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I read 1 Corinthians 14, and I looked at it, and I said, my Lord, where has this verse been my entire life? Because the Apostle Paul distinguishes the public tongue from the private tongue. 1 Corinthians 12 deals with the public tongue. Part of 1 Corinthians 14 also deals with the public tongue. But right here is a completely different vein. It is not public, but Paul has transitioned into a place of privacy of where he goes and prays. And he says, if I what in a tongue? If I what? Say it. So Paul is letting us know that right now it is possible for me and you to have the ability to pray in tongues, which your Bible says in verse two and verse three, the same chapter that when we do this, we don't speak to men, but we speak to God. Now, how do we speak to him through mysteries? He mentions something here for if I pray in a tongue, what prays? My spirit prays. But he says, my understanding is unfruitful. Now, this is where people really get tripped up because they're thinking, why would God do something like this to keep us in the dark? Maybe there's a lot of reasons. Maybe you couldn't handle the horror that was supposed to come in the next week or so. Maybe perhaps if you, if, you, if you heard what you were praying, you'd move immediately into doubt and unbelief. Maybe it was a way that God put into the church to be able to tap into the Spirit of God in a way so that you begin to pray exactly what the Spirit of God wants you to pray without interference and problem and trouble thinking in your own mind. Honestly, a confession. Have any of you ever prayed and you started out good, but within a few moments you're thinking of all kinds of th bad things in your head? I mean, I can think of some horrendous things while I'm praying. You see, your head, your brain, three parts. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And when you pray in English, all three of them are active. Your mind's your thinker. So you may be praying for your job, but you're thinking about new tires. You may be thinking about your wife, and you're thinking, but at the same time, you're thinking, I hope she didn't pull any money out of that account. So while you're praying in English, your words are coming out of your mouth, but sometimes your, your mind, the thinker, starts thinking, not what you're praying for. Or have you done this? You're thinking about what you're praying, and then you are responding to the prayers that you're praying to the Father on why that shouldn't happen. Right. <laughs> Filled with doubt and unbelief. Lord, I need this. Well, that ain't going to happen. Lord Jesus, would you come through? Well, he'll never respond to Jesus. And then there's the, there's the wheel, which is your big boss in your head, right? I mean, you can think of something, but somehow, somewhere, there's the big boss. Your wheel's going to tell you exactly what to do. And then there's your emotional side, your mind, your will, and your emotions. You're just all over the place. Have you ever been in that in prayer? Paul said it. Pull that scripture back up. For if I pray in a tongue... If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding's unfruitful. So there's two things here, two ways to pray. You pray with your head, and out of your mouth comes your native language, English. Every word that I'm saying to you has been already processed in a nanosecond from my head to my tongue and out of my vocal box. Every word you speak in your native language comes from here. 
And Paul says, for when I pray in a tongue, what prays? Your spirit. Every one of us in this room, you have a spirit. So when you pray in tongues, you don't pray from your head. You pray from your spirit. Your spirit has a voice. Your spirit is the eternal you. Mm. Your spirit is the redeemed you. Do you hear me? You see, when you got born again, your brain stayed the same. You get saved, but still you lust. You remember how you used to get your needs met. Talk to me. And you, and you have the nature of God on the inside of you, the spirit you. Uh-huh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So Paul says, when I pray in a tongue, my mind doesn't get involved. My emotional side doesn't get involved. And the will of me doesn't get involved. I am submitting my body, my spirit, to the Spirit of God and saying, Lord, I am an eternal spirit being created in the image of you. And I am now tapping into your Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, would you use my spirit to pray the right mysteries, the perfect will of God on this situation? Yeah, thank you. My spirit prays. My spirit prays. My spirit prays. Your spirit has muscles. Your spirit needs to be developed. There needs to be the ability to run a one-mile race, a two-mile race, a 5K, a 10K. For if there's a three-hour prayer meeting called, you're not checking out mentally in the first 30 minutes. You're saying, I've been here. I got this can do it. The need of the hour is so demanding. I have already trained for this war. Next verse. What is the conclusion then? Paul says, I'm going to pray with the spirit, which means I'm going to pray in tongues. And I also will pray with the understanding. Then he adds, I'm going to sing with the spirit. In other words, in tongues. And I will also sing with the understanding. There is no place in your New Testament that says this has expired. There's not one scripture in the New Testament that says that this is no longer viable and applicable to us as a people. You can't find it. It's not there. Paul says, I'm going to pray in tongues and I'm going to pray with understanding. Every day. As much as possible. I'm going to pray for Matthew as much as I know in the English. As much as I know in my mind. I'm going to pray for you. But then I've got to transition, watch this, to the spirit realm. Not that I can't pray being led by the Spirit in English. You hear what I'm saying? But there's no way to withdraw from your mind something that has not been deposited. The Lord works with what's up here. He's not giving me the formula to calculus because I want it. No, did you study? I gave you a book for that. You hear what I'm saying? So how do I make the transition? Now, here's the deal. Watch this. Now, every eye look at me because this is, this is important. How do I make the transition from my mind to my spirit? Have you ever walked into a room and you did not know where the light switch was? And what do you do when you walk into the room trying to find a light switch? It's dark, and so what do you do? Right? And then you find it, and you click it up. The next time you walk into the room, you may have forgotten where it is, 
but you got an idea and you get there quicker. Then there comes a time because you've been in and out of the room so often, you know exactly where it is. And you just flip the switch. Now, watch this. In the spirit and in your walk with God in this arena, you have to figure out how to flip the switch from connecting your tongue to your head and connecting your tongue to your spirit. I want to say it again. We have to learn. Now listen to what I'm saying. Learn and practice. That freaks people out. Learn and practice on how to flip the switch from praying from English, connecting your tongue to your head, and connecting your tongue to your spirit. And the more you do this, the quicker the transition happens. Thank you, Lord. I can do it without thinking because I know where the light switch is. I know where the switch is. I know, I know how I can pray. Now, I'm going to show you how quick. Jeremy, come on up here. All right. Pastor Jeremy is going to stand right there. And I can pray for him and his job and his ministry. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for Jeremy and everything that you're doing in his life. I thank you for his children, that they're being blessed and the new marriage. And Lord, I pray that you give them uh, just increase in every area. And then I go, show da kasalalobosi. Lord, I thank you that Jeremy is blessed coming in the city and going out of the city. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that uh, his grandchildren are going to be saved. All of them, Lord, are going to come to know you early in life. Divorce shall not come into their dwelling at any point. Lord, I bless him. Okay, now you see what I'm saying? Now, why is that? Stay right there. Why is that? I flipped the switch. Well, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish. Well, I wasn't talking to you. I wasn't, I, it's not made for you to feel good about it. Because Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, I speak mysteries. So it's not made for you to understand. I, I had this one guy, I had this one guy tell me, and, and, and the more, you can sit down for a moment, Pastor Jeremy, the more um, international the, the, the North Georgia revival gets, the more picky people become, right. not y'all, with critiques and videos and, and downplaying miracles, and, and then they'll find a clip. And so this YouTube video of, went off on me um, talking about tongues and a guy gets on there and says, listen to this. This makes no sense. All he's saying is la, 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 la. Sounds like la, 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 And he just, just makes fun of it. You know, it's like just riddle can. See, this is of the devil. Stay away from it. He's a false teacher, all that. And he says, that is no known language. Nobody understands it. And so I Googled because I've traveled the whole world. I've been into some places, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan. I've been to India. I've been to Africa, different parts of Africa. I've been to Central South America. I've been all over the place. I've heard some languages that I thought, there's no way you just put together a sentence. <laughs> that makes that is, try again. You know, it's just, it's like, how does he understand what you're saying? Because what you just said, like, you've lost your mind. Anybody ever, th you think, man, how, you go like on a trip, like on a cruise and y'all these, and you go. And so I Googled, I said, how many languages are there in the world? Because the critics think if it's not Spanish, if it's not French, if it's not Portuguese, if it's not Russian, then it's of the devil. Because they have to understand it. I, I Google. 
7,000 known languages in the earth. And there may be, I may be la, 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 somebody's language. I don't know. Right. Have you ever been in India and you had a woman become concerned over their child and hear that woman begin to pray in her language and she is like, and you know, in my spirit, I'm thinking that's not making any sense, but in her language, she's saying, help, 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 help. I don't know. Being in Africa, when they bring up a child that has no legs and that mama's weeping and she can't say but one thing and one word only and it sounds like something out of just made up, but it's coming from her gut, it's coming from her soul, it's coming from her spirit. I don't know to the Lord, la, 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 may, 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 may mean happy, 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 happy. I don't know. It may just be the launching pad to get off, to get my spirit man revved up to get into something deeper. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I may start off with la, 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 I'm going into the third and fourth and fifth gear. All right. So we're going to flip the switch. I'm going to flip the switch. Praying from my head, then praying from my spirit. I'm going to sing in English, and then I'm going to sing in tongues to the Lord. The Lord would not have put this in the Bible unless we want, he wanted us to utilize it. All right, stand your feet all across the room. Thank you, Lord. It's going to save your life. I said it's going to save your life. It's going to save your life. You're going to flip the switch. You're going to learn how to flip the switch in a nanosecond. Driving down the road in your automobile, something happens in front of you. May not be, oh, God's what you need. You may need to break out in tongues. So who in this room, just real honest and really being transparent, Pastor Todd, I don't have full understanding of this, but it's in the word. And I know that God wants the best for me. And I've not spoken in tongues. I've not prayed in tongues. But I want this beautiful gift that God's given to the entire body. I want that in my life. Would you raise your hand? Anybody in the house? In the house. I see them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you raised your hand, I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to try to coerce you, talk, manipulate you into coming. If your hand went up and you are truly desirous of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful encounter with God. Come to the front right now and stand right here in front of me right now. Come, come. Yeah, come right now. All across the room. Thank you. Come on, just stand right here in front of me. All across. Thank you, Lord. 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 All of us said that. Come on, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah. Are there others? Are there others? Yeah. Okay. Keep coming. Okay. Now, the biggest, the biggest concern that you have is this. I hear it all the time. And, and I applaud you for having this concern. I don't want to make it up. And I want it to be God and all God. Right? Okay. I just need you to erase that from your head for just a moment. And here's the reason why. Every time you pray in your native language, you make it up. Now think about that for just a moment. I mean, you're going down Walmart and it's raining outside. Lord, could you get me a parking place up front? Do you see what I'm saying? You, it's not bad. You just made that up. So hear how praying in the Spirit happens. I'm going to pray for you 
that you receive the fullness and the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon your life. And at the moment I say, be filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give the command of faith. I'm going to say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And at that very moment, out of your belly, your Bible says, rivers of living water shall flow. I want you to give voice to the Spirit of God coming up out of you. You're going to give voice to it. You're going to make a sound out of that. You hear what I'm saying? As I pray in English, I make a sound. My prayer may be weak at the beginning, but the more it begins, the more I pray, the stronger it gets. So my spirit prays. No, no, let me lose you. My spirit prays. Your, your spirit's never spoken out loud. But it's about to. You're going to yield to it and say, and you're going to give voice to it. Don't wait on it to happen. Just simply like, Because we don't do that in any other type of praying, do we? We don't go, take over, Lord, if you really want me to pray. If you want me to have this, if you want me to pray. No, out of your head you pray. Now you're going to pray out of your spirit. And you're going to give voice to it. It may be one word. It may be one syllable. It may be just one little sentence. That's perfectly fine because... You're learning just like your child learned. It was da at the beginning, da, 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 da. And then daddy, 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 please, daddy, daddy. Oh, I love you. you know, then it just started developing. Okay? Now, the rest of you, the residue of what's about to happen here, when I give the command of faith, all of us are going to pray in the Holy Ghost. If if you're weak in that area, let it go. Release it. Release it right where you are. Release it right where you are. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Say it loud enough so that your ears can hear it. Don't worry about your brother. Don't worry about your aunt beside you. Just, Lord, you fill me to overflowing, and out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mysteries to you, O oh God. Mm -hmm. Are y'all ready here at the front? Look at me. Every eye look at me. You ready? Say this after me. Say, Jesus, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I receive today the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I need your power. Come on, say, I need your power. I need your strength. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I will speak in new tongues today. My life is about to change. I'm never going to be the same. I am about to flip the switch. In Jesus' name. The Spirit of the Lord's all over you guys right here. Just right now. The Spirit of the Lord's all over you. The Spirit of the Lord's all over you. When I give the command that right there, I want you to begin to release it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, don't worry about what it sounds like out of your spirit. Be filled right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. There it is. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak it out of your belly. There it is. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Come on, give voice to it. As they spoke, the Spirit of God gave them the utterance right there. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Out of your belly. There it is. There it is. Right there. Speak it out. Come on. Give your voice. Let me have your hands. In the name of Jesus. 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 Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Speak it out. Be bold, be bold, be bold, be bold. Pastor Sherry, right here, right here. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There it is. Speak it out boldly, boldly, boldly. There. Trust your spirit right there. There it is. There it is. 
In the name of Jesus, put your hand right there on her belly. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch her from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Shall flow rivers of living water. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Pray. Don't give up. Come on, practice endurance right now. Don't stop after 30 seconds. Dig deep. Dig deep right now. Right there, right there, right there. Out of your belly. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly. Out of your belly, Rachel. Shababa manadada kase bore de da bo ko she mo no 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 no. She bore de da di kasa ma 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 na na no no no. Holy da da bo kase bore ke. Come on, endurance, endurance. Don't stop, don't stop. Hola bo ko she mo ro ko se bore de da 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 bo ko se lo lo lo. She bore de da mo ko se la 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 bo ko mo ro de ke se po to to. Come on. Come on, church. Let's pray. Let's pray. Shobo come on na ha sa ha ka boroko. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Aboka shaba bara di doto. Ina na na bo 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 de makasi. There it is, right there, right there. Every everyone, everyone. Shaba bo do de kesi la 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 la. Somebody here, you didn't come on that last invitation, but now you're sensing God is pulling you. Come right now. If you've not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, come right now. With the evidence of speaking in new tongues, come right now. Come right now. Come on, church, let's lift our voices. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 60 more seconds. Come on. Come on. You're, you're climbing the hill right now. You're climbing the hill. You're going to be glad. Finish strong. 60 seconds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Out of your belt shall flow rivers of living water. We shall speak mysteries unto the Lord. Come on, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Don't let the volume down. Let's finish strong. Come on. We're going to run right through the tape. Come on now. We're going to run right through the tape. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I know you're tired. Come on. Another 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Come on, lift the volume, lift the volume. Hila kasebo ko, shela bo se bo re de 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 kase. E la 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 bo koma de 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 kise bo do se bo re. Come on, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Yes. Clevero, come on. Yes. Put your hands together, magnify the Lord. Hula la 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 bo se bo re. My Lord, all over the place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Spirit of God. He's here. All right. They're going to continue to be ministered to here at the front. They can stay as long as they want to, but here's our, my instructions. Today, today at 5 o'clock, come and let's pray. Let's be here at 5 to pray. I'm going to show you a video tonight of a lady's miracle that took place in the water. You're going to watch it tonight. Last Sunday night. The full transformation of a healed body. Pastor Don Allen's going to be here. Bring in the word. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Don't sit at home and watch it on TV. You, you come here. Battle with us. Battle with us. Father, bless your children. 
as we reconvene, Lord Jesus, a little bit later to this afternoon, give us great rest, great nourishment. Let us pray in the Holy Ghost all day long, even in our sleep, because our spirit never sleeps. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. All right, all of y'all bundle up right here very quickly. Come on, everybody bundle up right here.